Ever wondered why CrossFit guys love to take their shirts off? Is it to show off their muscles or is it a secret cult ritual? Welcome to the bare-chested conundrum of CrossFit. It's a sight as common as chalk dust and kettlebells. The ripped CrossFit dude, shirt discarded, muscles gleaming with sweat. Now, you might be thinking, is this just a harmless show-off maneuver? Well, let's dig a bit deeper, shall we? In the world of CrossFit, removing one's shirt seems to be as integral to the workout as the WODE workout of the day itself. Is it about cooling down, maybe? Or perhaps it's a primal signal to potential mates. I'll uh, look at my chiseled pecs and rippling abs. I can lift heavy stuff. But let's not dismiss the possibility of peer pressure. Yes, even in the world of adults. Picture this, you're the new guy at the box. Everyone's shirtless. Do you keep your shirt on and stick out like a sore thumb? Or do you join the bare-chested brigade and fit right in? Now, we're not saying it's all bad for some. This shirtless spectacle could be a source of motivation, a beacon of body goals. But let's face it, for others, it could be downright intimidating. Imagine being a CrossFit newbie, walking into a sea of shirtless sculpted Adonises. It's enough to make anyone feel a tad self-conscious. And while we're at it, let's spare a thought for the poor gym equipment. Those barbells didn't sign up for a daily dose of sweaty, shirtless torsos. It's a hard life being a CrossFit barbell, folks. So why do CrossFit guys insist on going shirtless? Is it a display of machismo? a result of peer pressure or a secret cult ritual we're yet to decipher. The jury's still out on that one, but one thing's for sure, the next time you see a shirtless CrossFit guy, remember, it's not a cult. Probably. Before we move on, please like and subscribe to the channel. You're gonna love it, like I love your mother. Now let's move on to the four worst things about CrossFit. Yes, there are more than just the shirtless guys. First up, let's talk about the high injury rates. CrossFit has become notorious for its high injury rates. There's a saying that goes, CrossFit doesn't hurt you, doing CrossFit wrong does. But here's the kicker. It's like telling someone that jumping off a cliff doesn't hurt you, hitting the ground does. Of course, you could say that about any exercise program, but with CrossFit, it's like they've turned it into an art form. It's as if they're saying, hey, let's see how many ways we can get you to hurt yourself in the name of fitness. Next, we have the lack of standardized training. In CrossFit, there's a real lack of standardization. One CrossFit gym might have you doing one thing, while another will have you doing something completely different. It's like going to a restaurant and ordering a cheeseburger, but instead of getting a cheeseburger, they bring you a plate of spaghetti. You'd think, wait a minute, this isn't what I ordered. But in CrossFit, it's more like, wait a minute, this isn't what I signed up for. Then we have the elitist culture. CrossFit is notorious for its cult-like culture. You know the type, the ones who think they're better than everyone else because they can do a hundred burpees in under five minutes. Yeah, those guys, it's like they've got their heads so far up their asses, they can see their tonsils. They're the ones who'll tell you that if you're not doing CrossFit, then you're not really working out. It's a level of arrogance that's just mind-boggling. Finally, there's the high price tag. CrossFit is not cheap. It's like they've taken the concept of no pain, no gain, and added, and no money left in your bank account. You'd think with all the injuries, lack of standardization and elitist culture, they'd at least have the decency to make it affordable. But no, they want you to pay through the nose for the privilege of getting injured, confused, and looked down upon. So, to sum it up, CrossFit is a high-risk, low-reward exercise program that's more likely to leave you broke and injured than fit and healthy. It's like a game of Russian roulette, but with your health and bank account. It's a game where the only winners are the CrossFit gyms raking in the cash while you're left nursing your injuries and wondering why you ever thought it was a good idea. And the worst part, the worst part is that despite all these glaring issues, People still do it. It's like watching someone stick their hand in a blender and then wondering why they're bleeding. It's stupid, it's mind-boggling, and it's just plain ass backwards But hey, who am I to judge? If you enjoy risking your health, wasting your money, and being part of a cult-like culture, then by all means, go ahead. Just don't say I didn't warn you. So, those are the four worst things about CrossFit. And no, we didn't even mention the shirtless guys this time. Now, let's compare CrossFit to conventional lifting spoiler alert it, conventional lifting wins when we look at conventional lifting it's like a glass of fine aged whiskey it's been around for ages it's reliable and it's not trying too hard to impress you with flashy gimmicks it's all about the basics good form steady progress and consistency 
CrossFit, on the other hand, is like that fancy cocktail at the bar with a little umbrella and a slice of pineapple on the rim. It looks impressive, but there's a lot going on and it's a bit overwhelming. One of the main benefits of conventional lifting is the emphasis on safety. Good form is paramount and there's a steady progression in weight to ensure you're not overdoing it. In CrossFit, the focus is often on completing as many repetitions as fast as possible, which can lead to injuries if not done with proper form. Secondly, conventional lifting offers more predictable results. You know what you're getting into. Your biceps won't suddenly vanish because you've been focusing on your leg day too much. CrossFit is more varied, and while that can keep things interesting, it can also make it harder to track your progress and achieve specific goals. Lastly, let's talk about the culture. Conventional gyms are like a melting pot. You'll find all sorts of people there, each with their own goals and routines. In CrossFit, there's often a push towards a one-size-fits-all approach, which can be off-putting for some. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying CrossFit is the devil's workout. It has its place, and for some, it's a fantastic fit. But it's not for everyone, and that's okay. So if you want to lift weights without joining a shirtless cult, maybe stick to conventional lifting. It's straightforward, it's effective, and it doesn't require you to sacrifice your shirt at the altar of fitness. And remember, the best workout is the one you enjoy and stick to. So find what works for you and get lifting. After all, fitness is a journey, not a destination. So why is CrossFit not a good choice? Let's summarize. First off, we have the shirtless culture. It's a spectacle, really, like a peacock's display at the zoo, except these peacocks have been hitting the protein shakes and are covered in sweat. While there's no written rule that says you can't take your shirt off at the gym, there's also no written rule that says you can't wear a clown suit to a funeral. It's just not done. And yet, in CrossFit, it's almost expected. It's an unspoken rule, like an initiation rite, but really it's just an excuse to show off those abs you've been working on. Next, we tackled the four main criticisms of CrossFit. First, the high-intensity nature of the workouts, which can lead to injuries if not done properly. Second, the lack of individualized attention, which can lead to improper form and further risk of injury. Third, the competitive atmosphere, which can push people to their limits and beyond, often resulting in overexertion and burnout. And fourth, the high cost, which is simply not justifiable for many people. We then compared CrossFit to conventional lifting. And let's be honest, it was like comparing a wild stallion to a well-trained thoroughbred. Conventional lifting focuses on individual growth and progress, with a sensible approach to workout intensity and progression. It's a method that's been tried and tested, and it works. Plus, you don't have to take your shirt off. In conclusion, CrossFit might look appealing with its high-intensity workouts and camaraderie, but it's not without its drawbacks. The shirtless culture, the potential for injury, the lack of individual attention, the competitive atmosphere, the high cost. These are all valid reasons to consider whether CrossFit is the right choice for you. So remember, folks, if you want to stay safe, save money and keep your shirt on, maybe CrossFit is not for you. Thanks for watching and remember to lift smart.